So it is time to plant, filter up, filter up, is that, I don't know if that's a thing. <laughs> Get the filters going, fill the tank up, and put some fish into the tank. It's not gonna be as easy a process as that, it's gonna take quite some time, but uh, in the last video, we laid down the whole substrate system, which is very important. I mean, without a good substrate system combined with good lighting, you will get algae. So what can happen is people will think, oh, I don't want too many nutrients because nutrients can cause algae, which is true, but if you've got high lighting um, and not a lot of nutrients, and then you put a few plants dotted about, they aren't gonna outcompete anything in the tank like waste from the fish which means that you're going to get algae because nothing's being used so what is important is what we've already done we've laid down a massive nutrient foundation underneath this sand and what that means then is when i just pile the plants in combined with the this is actually much higher light than it looks there you go see we've got four of the super fish lights up here when we now put the plants in they've got all the nutrients coming from the roots they've got high light in they're going to be reaching for that they're going to be growing like turbocharged especially because we've got co2 systems going on here as well again that's all coming later on but for now the first thing we want to be doing is adding in our plants now i like to start with ferns they just give you a sense of where everything needs to be and then i usually move on down to anubias and things like that which i like to sit just a little bit lower in the ferns it just sort of blends it in quite nicely. So let's start off with some ferns. So plant-wise, I've got a ton of plants been delivered from Aquafleur. Look at how great they look. Big chunky ferns at the back there. I've got Trident as well. I've also got some really nice Echinodorus, but obviously that will be planted in a substrate. I've also got a load more down here at the back. Look at those. They're called uh, Microsorum Terrapus Green. It's like their extra green variety. Definitely going to use those. But then also dotted about all the tanks on the fish wall. So over here, We've got our keyhole cichlids, and behind them is a massive piece of bulbitis. These guys are going to be going in the tank as well. This tank's currently fishless, but there's a big bulbitis at the back there as well. I've got lots of bulbitis. I think it looks great. So this is quite a good example, actually, here. This is the archerfish tank, which are... <laughs> I've just disturbed the water, but they're all um, hiding at the back there. <laughs> they don't like it when you go over the top, you see, because their eyes are so used to looking up for either predators or food. So if you go near it, they go to the back. But you can see down here, look at this plant here. This is a java fern originally, and now it's got loads of little sort of baby ones growing off the leaves. So I've managed to collect quite a few off. So like this little plant that you can see here is all brand new growth that's just been fully grown underwater. So it should adapt instantly and just continue to grow. I've managed to save quite a few from other aquariums as well. So we've got some really nice mature java ferns. And as I say, we've got the bulbitis as well, looking so good, big clump of it there. And bulbitis and java ferns go together like, like, I was gonna say peas in a pod, but that doesn't really work because the pod is part of the, they go together like, my mind's blank, it's just, just something that goes together <laughs> nicely. I don't know, I don't know. Peas and carrots, that's what I was thinking of, me and Jaddy were like, pea. Now, of course, they don't just come out of the tank like that. They've all got little sort of dead bits attached to them and that, like you can see here. But these dead leaves are what the new ones were attached to. So yeah, just strip them bits off. And over here, look, we've got, we've got some more sort of non-perfecty ones. So clear those out. And now we're left with all these beautiful ones to reuse. And that's why plants are so great because with epiphytes like that, they'll just keep growing. You can take parts off of them. It's the same with Anubius. It'll keep growing outwards and you can trim it at the uh, rhizome. And you've got two plants eventually. It's quite a slow process, but if you've got enough of them, then yeah, you get a good yield. And then with stems, well, everyone knows what stems are like. You trim them, they grow back as two, and you've got the original still. So yeah, it's win-win with plants. It's, I think of it always more as an investment than just a straight out purchase. So yeah, that's everything we've got prepared. There's not that many ferns, to be honest, Java ferns. And here is the new ones, the fresh ones. So yeah, Microsorum Terrapus Greens by Aquafleur. Love it, look at that, look at that vibrancy. It's gonna look so good in there. So I'm gonna start in the middle with my uh, biggest ferns. Now, unfortunately, this wood is shaped really well to be able to just push it in gaps. I'm trying to work out the best places. That area there is definitely good. And then there's a nice little area on top here as well. Now that top piece there is sort of pushing itself over because of the gap to the left and to the back. That's absolutely fine. You want some there as well. So what I will do is on that area right there, I'll just stick another piece. It sort of hides where it all ties in and also brings a little bit more into that front area. And I'll just tie that whole thing to sort of sweep back then, like it's one giant plant. Mm -hmm. 
And then it's just a case of continuing that process now until I've covered all the parts of the wood that I want to. I'm gonna try my best not to cover all of the wood. <laughs> I mean, it would be a massive shame, wouldn't it? But each piece does need its own little green section and it really does bring everything to life and tie it all in in a nice way. I'm gonna put some bulbitis in separated areas as well. So it's like sort of on its own as well as the Java ferns. I just think that might be quite cool. I don't know why I'm gonna do it though. <laughs> Right, I'm loving that so far. Just a nice big clump of ferns. You just can't go wrong with them. I've also done some little cuties, you know, just, just little sprigs of them on that one. And then look, another like little sprig there as well. They'll get bigger and bigger. Uh, I might do a few more of those actually. I really like them. They just, they bring the fern up a little bit without being too like takey over. Is that a word? No. <laughs> so the next thing I like to add in is the Anubius. Like I say, I found that it works better if you keep it below the uh, Java fern or the Bulbitis and it sort of merges in nicely. Yeah, I've got Anubius and uh, Bucephalandra. It's the same sort of idea. It's what, that's what I do anyway. You don't you know, have to do that. You can do whatever you want. So don't let anyone tell you there's rules. There aren't no rules. Do what you want, okay? <laughs> There we go, look, loads of nice detail in the foreground with all the boosts. And um, look, that's a really nice piece there, Coffifolia, isn't it? That's uh, Anubis Coffifolia. Absolutely love that plant. It just looks so sort of aged. And look at all the roots coming down as well underneath. That just makes it look like it's been there for a long time, right? Now I was initially gonna fill this whole gap that you can see like right across there with all the different plants and stuff to tie it all in. And then I thought, you know what? That's a really good place for fish. Like if they want some refuge or that kind of thing, you can see right through it at the moment. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm gonna leave it. I think that's important to have areas that the, uh, the fish can sort of take refuge and just chill out for a little bit. And uh, they're more likely to come out into the open if they've got places to hide. That's what I've always found anyway. Another important thing that we need to keep doing, spraying this down. I'm gonna to have to be doing this a lot because uh, Obviously filling this thing up is gonna take ages. I won't be able to do it too quickly because I need to get the right sort of temperature. Like not bang on, but it wants to be at least not like really cold or really hot. Because I'm using so much water, the hot water sort of boiler system for the whole room will run out like halfway up. So I just gotta keep an eye on it, keep taking temperature. I've got like a digital button one that tells you the temperature really quickly. So I'll keep an eye on that when I do fill it up. I'm not filling it up yet though. Next up, I'm gonna go with mid-ground plants. You can either do foreground or mid-ground. I'm gonna go in the mid-ground because then it will show me where I wanna put the foreground stuff. What is the difference though? Well, plants like the Crips that you can see here, these are a mid-ground plant. They just get about, I don't know, like that tall in the, in the tank. So if you put them in the front, you can hide anything behind it that's shorter. So we go with those ones for mid-ground. And then for the stuff that stays nice and short without trimming, we've got dwarf hair grass and uh, Monte Carlo there. Six pots of each, oh no, five pots of that. But I only want it for a few tufts of detail anyway, so that's perfect. Anyway, time for some crips. Okay, next up, I am just preparing some Liliopsis Nove Zealandia. <laughs> Don't know why I said it like that, but yeah. I've got a few little sprigs of it dotted here. I probably broke those up into half, so I've got about eight tufts. I'm making hell of a mess, but I can't be bothered to clean it up now. I'm just gonna clean it up the end and keep going because I just wanna crack on with the bill, get it all done, and as it's filling, I can tidy up after. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the option. There we go, look, just like that. Just a couple of little details. Some people like to just go with one type of like, like foreground plant, keep it that, but I just find, personally, I just think it looks more natural with, with a mix. A mix of plants just looks more foresty. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, that's what I like to go with. It's up to you, do whatever you want, like I always say. Oh, I almost forgot the S repens as well, gotta have some of that in the foreground. Oh. 
Oh yes, I think that foreground is looking so good. And uh, remember, all of these little bits of Monte Carlo are all gonna sort of creep. There's nutrients underneath them, they're all good. They're gonna get good lighting, CO2. So it will creep right out to the foreground if you let it, but I'm not sure I will. I'll, I'll see how it goes. If it's looking amazing, I will. Right, next up I wanna add a it's kind of rear mid-ground plant. I've got an Echinodorus, doesn't get too big, quite leafy, it's, uh, hang on. It is this one here, which is Echinodorus marti. Yeah, look at that, beautiful little plant. Um, just a, a little bit of a feature. I've got, I wanna put three of them in, one near each island, and it's just a different texture. Very, very vibrant as well, these ones. One of the most vibrant, green and easy growing ones I've found. So that is everything done up to this point. Well, obviously everything's done up to this point or it wouldn't be done. Um, now it's time to plant the stems. I'm gonna put a list up on the screen as we're doing it. And also I'll be adding some after as well. Some that are already been grown underwater. But the first ones are potted ones. So I'm just gonna be able to plant them straight into the soil where I want them. Uh, not soil, sand, soil's sort of underneath. And yeah, there's a lot of them. So I'm not doing that individually. We just need a nice big time-lapse, get that whole thing done. We can fill it up then. Okay, that is all I wanna do for now. We've got some evenly spaced stems. I've gone for mainly green over in that corner, which slowly merges to sort of red. It should go very, very red in this corner and section here, and then back to green again. That is the plan. <laughs> I mean, it's gonna do what it wants, let's be honest. Uh, I can now fill it up, but I do need to do it very slowly. So to start with, I'm gonna use my water butt, which if I had to fill this whole thing up at that pressure, it would, it would take all day. So, but it's nice and steady to start with. I'm gonna put some stuff down in the front to make sure that the water doesn't just flush everything. Uh, once it's up to a certain level, I should probably get to about there with what's in the water, but uh, I'll, I'll switch over to the tap and just let it go nice and steady. If I run out of any warm water and, and it's getting too cold, I'll just stop and wait. Um, it's gonna take a while, but uh, yeah, it's another way around it really. Right, it's, it's taken such a long time, but we're almost there. I'm basically filling it from my water butt. So I've just turned the taps off, but the taps are on full. And then if I need to add some hot or cold, I just adjust the hot and cold. And then it runs all the way down here into the water butt where there's a little, uh, what do you call it? Like a pump, I guess, like a pond pump or something. Comes out, goes around, and then uh, fills up the tank. So yeah, nearly there, uh, my wife's just called. Where, where are you? <laughs> I'm probably gonna be another hour or so, uh, but I've just noticed something I wanna get now whilst it's not full of water. Some of the little glue points, like that one there, look ugly. Um, there was some on this area as well, but as you can see, just take a little bit of Anubius, and then I'm gonna go and stick little pieces of Anubius and Booses on these little, little points. They're hitting the light as well, so they'll get good light. They're down low, so they're not gonna be blasted, which means they are actually grow nicely as well. So yeah, the way to do this is actually put glue, super glue gel on the plant, on the rhizome, out of the water. And then you just reach down to the point. Oh, it's down far. And just hold it there for about 10 seconds decent amount of pressure and it should sort of fix itself. It'll take a little bit longer to go like solid, but it should stay there. And then when you lift your finger off, all good. Right, it's the next day. The tank is full. It took so long, but you know, it's worth taking the time of it. If I'd have put the hose in from the main taps, it could have just blasted a load of this stuff. It could have disturbed the substrate system and everything. So it was worth the wait. I think it took about five hours to fill it up using the water butt with the uh, pumping in method. But it's done now. It's a slight murkiness to the water. You'd expect that. That's all brand new wood that's gone in there. So it's gonna leach some tannins. Sorry if I sound weird. I've woken up this morning with some sort of sinus thing. And it's like, yeah. And to top it off, I've done something to my hip. And I think it's getting up and down, jumping down from the ladder quickly, like high impact. Anyway, who cares? The show must go on, right? I'll, I'll persevere through. I've had some cold and flu stuff, 
like I'm all bunged, but it doesn't matter because I really, really want to get this finished. So yeah, this is already looking great. There's a lot of plants still in the background, but all of those are out of water, sort of, they've been grown out of water, most of them. So for instance, that Ludwigia you can see there will look nothing like that when it starts growing in properly. Uh, the palustrious red in the middle there, again, it's a bit sort of wiry, that'll just snip that back and replant it. But there's a lot more stems I've got dotted around the studio that I wanna be able to add into this. So for instance, in the Akara tank, I've deliberately not trimmed any of this and any of this because I knew I would want them for this setup. So I'll be taking those for the red section. And it's the same up here in the red tank. I've deliberately let it grow tall because I need to come in, snip a load of it out and use a load of those as well. Fish are loving it. These fish will be going in the tank as well. Silver tip tetras. There's only like eight or nine in there, but uh, yeah, a nice little addition. The pearl weed tank in all its glory does need a trim again, but I'm a little bit hesitant to put pearl weed in just because of how fast it grows. Like I trimmed this a couple of weeks ago, down nice and tight. I also re-fertilized it because I noticed that the tips were slightly off the green that I wanted. As a result, it's gone absolutely nuts. It looks fantastic, but damn is it some work. It looks like a, a green cloud with rocks coming out, doesn't it? It looks so good. And I've got more reds all in the angelfish tank as well. I've also got a ton of red root floaters all over the surface as well if I want to use those. And there's some mini water lettuce as well, because probably we'll want some floating plants over in the big tank. And over in the endless setup, which I, I've done this a couple of weeks ago now, but already all this rotala is reaching the surface. So I'm going to come in there, take a chunk of that out as well. So that'll be perfect in the background section. And I've tidied up all the mess from yesterday as well. These are all the pots that we used in total. Uh, let me count those up. So there's 64 pots in total, but remember I used a lot of bulbitis and java ferns that I already had as well, so yeah. <laughs> but the job now is to go and collect up all of those stem plants, um, and then I bunch them all together and put weights on them. I'll show you how I do that. I just find it so much better to create impact in certain areas, because at this point now, it's gonna be very fiddly to just take each stem and just place it all in. That's, that is not my game at all. <laughs> Right, so I've gone round and taken a ton of trimmings from all the tanks. I have got a lot here. It's just gonna make the tank look instantly great. Don't worry if you can't do this, your plants will eventually grow in, but I have the luxury, I guess, of uh, being able to go around and taking stuff from other tanks, which needed trimming up anyway, so this just all works out perfectly. I mean, I did kind of plan it that way as well. But what I do now is go and take a sort of section like this, because you can see I, I pull them together and trim them all at the same point so you've got like a nice neat little bunch and then i'll use the the weights that came with the plants i'll just feed it through there a big group i'll put a couple on and because of the leaves it sort of barbs that on and it doesn't come off plus then you can push it in the sand as well and it's all good it'll still send out different runners and stuff so the uh the actual ring doesn't restrict any growth or anything it's just a really good way of using it these are made of clay so it's i think it's correct well ceramic they don't break down or anything. So yeah, it just works out perfect. There we go. A really, really nice bunch or group of bunches. Is that right? Yeah. We can now put these in. I've got taller ones, obviously. Keep the taller ones at the back. I've got a nice little stumpy one there. That'll go more the foreground. I've actually looped some, um, some rings onto that one some, with some plant weight, just because it's so sort of thick, that one that I was, with like one weight, it wouldn't just stay down, but with the two and the plant weight stuff, yeah, that is sorted. And I've got my massive super fish tongs to help out with this as well. So a nice bit, oh, my hips. <laughs> a nice big tall one to go in that back area to start with, I think. Absolutely perfect, look at that. Although the uh, roots are annoying me, but we can sort of trim those off. It's just where it's been growing in the water horizontally. And I wanted this dense group in right in that foreground section. Burying it in the sand. Oh yeah. And then it's just a case of keep going now and just putting it in the places where I think it's needed. I mean, at this stage, it's not gonna matter too much because within a couple of weeks, everything's just gonna grow anyway. 
probably need a shaping and a replanting. So it's just a case of getting these plants in. Remember when you start up a tank, the more plants you can get in to start with, the it massively improves your chances of success. Like because it reduces algae, but not only that, it uses nutrients. So if you put fish in, they're producing waste. The plants will use that waste to grow, which means it's not in the water, which means it's more healthy for your fish and it just looks awesome. <laughs> There we go, so I've planted up all of the middle sections how I want them, loads of red in there. And that sort of transfers over to this side as well, but it will be more sort of orangey tones as it goes to the edge, the same on both sides. So that should look pretty cool. And then I have now got the taller ones to come all the way at the side, so you'll actually be able to see them from the start, because otherwise, yeah, you wouldn't see these at all. Not that that matters because it'll only be a couple of weeks and all of these are gonna grow so much, especially with the four lights that we've got on the top as well. Yeah, we've got these nice, really tall ones here. I've saved those to the last. Right, that is the planting finished and that's taken me way longer than expected. So this is a good place to end the video. I've got so much more work to do. Next video for sure, all the filtration on. We've gone a little bit misty as you can see, that's to be expected. I've disturbed all the soil underneath the sand, misted up the sand, plus the, uh, the bogwoods leaching as well. But next video, we're gonna get all that filtration stored. We've got UV clarifiers, we've got a CO2 system. Get that all sort of clear, and then we can put some fish in as well, the initial fish. So look forward to that in the next video. So hopefully you've enjoyed this one. It's, it's nearly there, we're nearly there. I'm, I'm realizing my dream, and in the next video, it should become reality to a degree i mean i still want to add loads and loads of fish over time but initially just to get a few in even that's going to look cool from all swimming around isn't it oh see you on the next one